Hello there. This video describes the way that I play the tune Peak Del Ridge and I'm going to sort of break it into three sections. The first part will be the basic tune played fairly slowly for anyone who may not be familiar with reading musical notation. But if you are, there is a copy of the notation or a link to the notation and that's in the video description. Also there is a link to the tab as well if you're not happy with notation. So there's both types available. But for anyone who prefers to um, learn a tune by ear, I shall play the first. The first part of this video will be the tune played quite slowly. Now I will also play the tune with an individual bow stroke for each note to keep it nice and simple. And then in the second part of the video I will try and show you how you can play more than one note using longer bow technique in this tune. And finally I will show you in the last part of the video some of the grace notes that I've used in this particular tune. Now to keep things um, moving along, you may feel that you want to fast forward to certain sections. So I've also indexed in the description various parts of this video. So if you want to go fast forward to one particular point, you can do. So hopefully that will keep the thing moving along for you. Anyway, this is a tune played slowly with an individual bow stroke for each note. So that's the basic melody. Um, this tune is in the key of C because there are no sharps or flats that I'm aware of. So I, was, I notate this one as being in the key of C. Um, and just to mention now the, um, the way that you can bow this if you, you feel up to it. You can on some occasions use a longer bow to play more than one note. So I'll, I'll try and show you. Sorry. Now the beginning section there, now that's all single bows. Now the next part is one long bow. I'm more or less playing two notes with every bow stroke there. So that gives it more of a sort of lilt. Now you'll have
have to experiment with that, but certainly if you can try and play more than one note with a slightly longer bow, it does seem to give it more of a, of a lilt to this particular tune. And also there are slides. There's a nice slide at the very beginning. <laughs> So there, there's definitely an emphasis placed on those notes. And then the next part of the tune. Don't be in too much of a hurry to get to the rest of the tune on those longer notes. Hold them for a fraction longer. It just makes the tune sound a little bit more um, interesting in the melody. Now that part there That's almost like what they call the Scottish snap. It's a sort of short bow stroke. It just emphasizes the start of each note. slide there. If you look at the notation, for those of you that are using the notation, I sort of indicate slides with a little uh, mark just before the note. There's one right in the very first bar, the very first note of the first bar of the A section there is a little mark in front of that note and that indicates a slide so wherever you see that that does indicate that you need to slide that particular note and of course with slides they are very much down to the player's technique and style so you can add those really wherever you feel it's most appropriate the B section so there are quite a few points there where I'm playing more than one note with a longer bow stroke So once again there are longer bow strokes there and did you catch that slide on the E string? It's very subtle that one because the note is actually a natural on the E string there isn't much space there for a slide but you can just bring it up from the the nut of the violin and just to achieve a small amount of a slide just to give it that, that sliding effect I'm not sure that indicated it too well but I'm, I hope you get the meaning Now on that part there are definitely longer bows Let's just have a look at one of those in more detail So that first one I'm certainly playing three notes there with one bow stroke It gives it more of a, um, a swingier sound, more of a lilting sound. And you have 
to, when you're using these longer notes and, uh, or longer bow strokes and adding more than one note, perhaps two or three notes, you have to um, emphasize the rhythm by giving a little bit more of a push. The rhythm for this tune is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And my bow is almost reflecting that rhythm. My foot is tapping one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's going up through my body and it's sort of allowing my arm to, to follow the same rhythm. So in other words, I'm using the whole of my body um, to sort of impart the rhythm of the tune. Um, that, that's my style. I tend to um, not play completely stationary. I tend to move around a lot, as you probably noticed in, in my videos. I, I can't prevent myself from doing that. And also because I guess that I don't play in the correct style with my right hand. It's not got the flex that I believe you're supposed to have. Um, but it does allow me to pass that rhythm on from my, my foot, which is keeping um, time with the beat, up through my body and into my arm. So uh, that's just my style. But you certainly need to try and bear in mind that you're trying to push the rhythm of a tune through the bowing as much as the notes. That's really important. <clears throat> Finally, the, um, the grace notes. Um, don't get too strung up about these grace notes. I put them on the notation purely to give you an indication of some of the ones that I put in to this particular tune. I remember when I was first learning to play the violin, I found this really difficult to do. Uh, my fingers just didn't move at the speed that I required them to. Certainly the muscle memory hadn't developed sufficiently. That can take some time, so don't get hung up on grace notes. Concentrate on playing the tune. But if you are um, interested in the grace notes that I, I play, I've tried to indicate some of them on this notation. The ones that seem the most important are the ones where I play this particular phrase. That particular phrase, and all I do I'm just trying to indicate there what I'm doing. I'm playing the melody on the D string and the A string. Um, that occurs in both the A section of the tune and the B section. And the grace note I quite like to put in is the one on the A string <clears throat> where my first finger is on the, the, fir, the, the very first note of the A string and all I do is flick my middle finger onto the second note. Now we're in the key of C so it's only the next note up. So I go like this. I'll do that again. It's almost like what they call a five note roll. On the A string again, first note. So you're going first note and then you're going up one note then back down to the first note and then down to the open string and then back to the first note 
So it's this. So the phrase is like this. got to try and get that sort of snap in there at the same time. There's a lot happening in that those couple of bars. But quite important nevertheless. So it's worth practicing those and I think this tune is an excellent example of a sort of five note roll in, in that context. Sounds dead simple, but of course when you play it quickly, it adds character to the tune. So those are the grace notes, there are lots of them in the tune. And the best way if you're new to grace notes and, and you want to pick out some of the ones that I've, I'm playing, is look at the notation, play the tune very, very slowly at first. And once you've learnt the tune, just look at the grace notes and then just try and add a couple in and just see if you're comfortable with playing them and then just gradually pick up speed. Obviously, it takes time and grace notes do take a while to, uh, to master with the muscle memory and everything. But there we are, that's the tune Peak Dell Ridge. To make it more fun for you, there's a further video after this one, which gives you the, the um, backing track, uh, where I had a lot of fun uh, using a synthes two synthesizers actually. An electric guitar, a bass guitar, and I think that was it. Yeah, so, oh, and some vocal things that um, I, I've got. So it gives you a nice backing track to play along with, and of course the notation will appear on that backing track, so you can uh, keep a track of where you're up to. But um, I'll just quickly play the tune just to, to finish off, and I hope you enjoy this. Just remember how it goes. Thank you for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye now.